Well, I tell you what, where has the time gone? It seems like just yesterday, I was starting out serious ice fishing back in the Iowa Great Lakes region, 1970s. Boy, where has the time gone? But there was always a cutting edge to ice fishing. Even back in those days, Iowa Great Lakes region, we were fishing with some of the first uh, fiberglass rods at the time from the Gilmore Rod Company. Uh, we were fishing with jigging rapalas, which re were not really popular widely across the country. And then there was a little lure concoction that I've got right here that actually originated in the Iowa Great Lakes region and we helped to popularize this around the country. Now this consists of a spoon, a little dropper line here of about two and a quarter inches, and then a jig, a lead head jig here um, with a bigger hook on it, especially for perch. Typically in the early days, always packed with maggots. Uh, these days it might actually be one of the gulp products, uh, often works just as well. The spoon added flash, so for attraction, but it also is enough of a weight that you could fish very efficiently in deep water. The most important thing about the, the line connection is that it not be too long. Experimenting over the years, we found that two inches was just about right, two and a quarter inches would work, two and a half would work, but once you got to about three inches, it began to get too long so that you too often got tangled. And too many anglers, and I've seen this a hundred times and a hundred times and a hundred times over the years, will get to thinking, well, if a spoon is good as an attractor, and this then finesses the fish to a bite, because it's hanging down below, a little bit disconnected from uh, the spoon, that, well, why not just lengthen it even more and be even more stealthful? It completely just doesn't work very well. So this little tiny dropper right here has to be anywhere from two to about three inches long, with two and a quarter and two and a half being just about right. So in Europe, they had already worked this out on their own without any help from us and vice versa and pretty much came up with the same thing except that they used a dropper chain. So this is one of the more popular ones today, but it was also an early day model. This has been out for 25 years in Europe. And this is a Nils Master Haley. And you'll notice that it's got a, you know, a very light dropper chain to just an open hook. And sometimes instead of the open hook, you'll have a lead head jig here. Here's another uh, Haley, Nils Master Haley, and you can see that the dropper chain is just a little bit longer, the spoon is longer and heavier. And one of the important components of a dropper rig is that those spoons not have too much action. That's why the cast master was so good, so it's gotta be a spoon that comes up and falls down, comes up, falls down very, very straight and, and flat like that. The other thing that you have, uh, you know, very popularly in Europe, but also these days, the Nils Master Haley is marketed in the United States and uh, you can buy various dro dropper chains and they've got a little clip on the top and you just slip that clip on and away you go. So very, very versatile system. Uh, newest uh, spoon on the market is from the Clam Corporation. It's called the uh, Speed Spoon and it's basically the same configuration as the uh, Nils Master Haley but it's got a clip on the top and a clip on the bottom and then uh, it's very versatile too because you can change options that are hanging down there. You can go from a lead head jig to a, a little teardrop like that one right there. The other option I've been experimenting with in uh, areas where you can actually fish two or three hooks is to have the dropper spoon right here hanging down below and then up above one of the more new introductions are these drop shot swivels with the swiveling hook and this uh, comes to me from, or the idea comes to me from fishing for whitefish on Green Bay where they use a configuration like this. So they'll have a spoon hanging down below and then usually about a foot and a half to two feet up, they'll have one of these uh, regular hooks tied in. And so the whitefish has an option for either, either or. So something for you to experiment with. Uh, as I say, this particular rig right here is an ongoing experiment, but overall, the dropper rigging is absolutely deadly. You have to add it to your arsenal if you haven't already. Thousands and thousands and thousands of fishermen have since we introduced it in the early 1980s and since they started to send over some of the European options for, them to fit, for us to fish here. So a little bit of history, uh, a lot of fun. We're always on the cutting edge you're trying to be. And sometimes what was cutting edge becomes straightforward stuff that you have to use just about every other time you're on the ice.